Hello guys and girls, Elias is here. In this episode, we will be building a full serverless application from end to end. I'll take you on a journey with me and I'll be sharing my browser, my command line, and my IDE where I write the code. We'll go through all the steps, the design, the infrastructure, and the implementation of the logic itself. Let's write some code. And for this, I will be, let's start by writing the read app first. And I'm going to be using the Sam CLI. What is SAM? I have a full video that I will link in the description as well about SAM, but it's a framework that allows you to build serverless application and it has a lot of great stuff that you can use to make your development faster. So you can go here and install it on your machine and follow it up. Basically, there's these two, two commands. I already have SAM installed in my, in my computer. So now let's write some code. I start by doing SAM init and I follow the guide. So number one, to, to create quick start template, I want to use a serverless API because this is pretty much what I'm building, a serverless API. So number three, I want to use Node.js 14. 16 is not supported yet by Lambda as of the time of this video. And I want to call it read app. It's cloning from GitHub repo because Sam, keep in mind, is open source. Finished, finally. So I have my read app and I want to open it in VS Code. So when we did the Sam in it, Sam created this application for us. And first of all, let's have a look at our template. This is where the infrastructure is defined. This is the template that we will be used to define these components. And if you are not familiar with CloudFormation, I urge you to have a look at it. This is a service that actually allows you to provision your cloud uh, infrastructure using declarative way. At the center of our application, we have a Lambda function. And Sam, in the demo app that, the, that it installs, it already starts by showing us, by including a, a Lambda function, get all items of type serverless function. So let's copy this, go to Google. Hmm, what is serverless function? First of all, we put everything in dark. And this is what we get. This creates an AWS Lambda function, an AWS IAM execution role, and event source mapping. So we go through all the properties here that offers us, and then we add just the ones that we're interested in. Now we're starting to declare um, everything around our Lambda function. So there's the handler that's gonna be in source handler gets all whatever. So source handlers gets all items. This is the core, this is the code that's gonna be executed in our Lambda function. Simple JavaScript code, that's pretty much it. The runtime is node 14. You remember when we created the Lambda function from the console? We're pretty much doing the same. We're just doing it through code. And this is what we call infrastructure as code, IAC. And here the memory size, the timeout, how long I want my Lambda function to be executed for. Quick pro tip, every time you put a Lambda function behind an API gateway, like we've done here, don't give it more than 29 timeout, 29 seconds timeout, because API Gateway has a 30 second timeout. So regardless what you give it here, it's gonna stop after uh, 30 seconds. Let's go back to policies before, environment, uh, afterwards, environment as well. Right now, I wanna focus on events. Again, where did we get these events? Is from the documentation. Here, if you skim through it, you see that we have events. And specify the events that trigger this function. This is super important. The type is event source. I click on it. And here you can see we have a bunch of services that can trigger this function. S3, SNS, Kinesis. For us, according to our design, it's an API gateway. And I'm going to choose HTTP API here. And it, and it gives me all the properties that HTTP API. So I'm going to change API to HTTP API. If you want to know the difference why I went to HTTP API rather than API, just let me know in the comments and I'll explain it. So the path of our API and the method. What's happening now is that Sam is going to 
just by adding this, well, actually just these four lines of code is gonna create an API gateway. It's gonna give it all the required permissions and it's gonna connect it to our Lambda function, which means it's gonna trigger a Lambda function. Go back to the console. Remember when we created our functions here? So the format event, for example, this is just the function, but I can add a trigger to it. I can come here and choose an API gateway, create an API, HTTP API, security, open, add, and that's pretty much what we've done here. You see here, it's a trigger that triggers my Lambda function. That's exactly what, we, what we've done here. It's just, we're doing it through code. So it's easier to version. So like it's it's version, then it's easier to share between teammates and it, it, be, it can be upgraded through all the environments that you have rather than having always to do this uh, through uh, the console. And that actually creates our Lambda function. Now, go back to the domain, to the design. My function needs to have access to DynamoDB table and in the cloud, permissions and security are super important. So I need to explicitly give my function the ability to read from the DynamoDB table. And that's where policies come in play. Let's open policies. So you look at this and you're like, oh, DynamoDB CRUD policy. What, like, what's, is there some magic here? I just have to type whatever I want. Well, pretty much. If you search AWS SAM managed policies in Google, you'll see that SAM offers a bunch of managed policies that you could just drop in your application. So this DynamoDB CRUD policy, which is here, DynamoDB CRUD policy, under the hood, it gives you all these permissions, but you don't have to write them yourself. I mean, it's 2022 20, people. Let's just use this and it takes as a parameter the table name and you see here the table name, but I'm just interested of, from, I'm interested by reading from the DynamoDB table. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for. I must have a DynamoDB read policy so copy it, put it here, and the table name is the table that I'm gonna create. And this policy translates to this permissions, get item, scan the table, query the table, batch get item, and describe the table. A few lines of code I've written, I've declared my Lambda function, its memory, its size, its environment, its security, parameters, the trigger, and now I can share this with my teammates and that's it. So we built our, <clears throat> Lambda function. Let's now build our DynamoDB table. Sample table. All right, so let's copy this. Again, Google is your friend. This is what I do. I sometimes spend a lot of time working on CloudFormation and building this infrastructure that I started calling myself a YAML engineer. And so a simple table creates a DynamoDB table with a single attribute primary key. It's useful when data only needs to be accessed via primary key. We'll keep it simple. So I'm creating my DynamoDB table here. And these are the parameters. Again, you can click on any one of them and read and check whether it's required and the type and everything. And we're just gonna keep whatever comes here with the, uh, with, with the generation and the provision throughput. So I'm not gonna provision actually my DynamoDB table, but let's, let's double check provision throughput. Is it mandatory or not? It is not required, so I can just delete it. Then save this like this. I'm gonna leave the output. And here we went through the get all item functions, but you know, you can, it generates also for us get by ID. You know, if you want to just target a specific ID, I don't need it here. I don't need the put item function. I just want my get all items. And that's pretty much it. Now we can get to the rest, which is creating a log, uh, creating CloudWatch log group for my Lambda function. I'm gonna remove the output from now. So let's do this, let's do this together. I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it Lambda function log group up. And uh, sometimes because I use I use Copilot because sometimes I don't even have to write this stuff. I just wait for it. Um, so the type is going to be AWS logs log group. I'm gonna create a log group properties. You'll see that I always wait 
for Copilot to do its thing, but it doesn't seem... Oh, it was not active. Mm -hmm. All right. Bum bum. And let's see. Oh, there you go. It generates for me what I need. Read up. Sam, I can either... This is the name of my resource function. I want to actually create a log group for my Lambda function. So I'm going to give it the name of my Lambda function. Oh, there, that's exactly it. That's what I need. I'm just gonna use a sub to substitute. Uh, I need a dollar here. All right, so, which means that everything that starts with the dollar will be substituted with its own value. So I'm getting the reference of the name function. Function name, pretty much, or by default, it will return the function name, so no need. And I'm going to retain the log since it's just for development. I'm gonna keep it for 14 days. And I can do the same thing for create another one for my CloudWatch, but I'll just keep it this way. Bam! All right. So now let's deploy our template onto our AWS account and see our resources being created. So I delete everything I created manually. And I will go to CloudFormation just to keep an eye on things. There's no stacks here. So I open my CLI and I run SAM deploy, give it the profile to use. Guided profile IoT and the region is US East 1. Read app with SAM, yes, two, two, two. And now if I come back to the console and I start reloading, oh, it's already started deploying my stack. And so everything that I defined in this template is now being deployed. And if I go to events, you can watch this live as it evolves. And you could also follow the deployment from the CLI. And it already knows that it needs to create log groups, Dynamo table, API gateway, permissions, IAM role, and the Lambda function. And it started by creating the DynamoDB table for us, resources, and we'll see it here as soon as it finished. Now, if I wanna open DynamoDB and keep an eye on it, tables, and this is our, remember how we called it, how we named it? We didn't. <laughs> so it gave it a, just a random name, the stack name, sample table, which is the name of the resource, and then a random number, right? And if we go here, you see that it has an ID string, which is the primary key that we chose here, ID string. So it's creating our DynamoDB table for us. Let's go back to CloudFormation, reload the events. I'm going to keep this open as well. Oh, finished successfully. All right. Everything is good. This is our ReadSAM app. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. And these other resources, it creates our Lambda function, log group, DynamoDB, API gateway, Lambda function. This is the Lambda function that creates for us. And it's all being managed. And see, there's the trigger to API gateway already was added just by adding these four lines here. And if you open the details, it's a get, HTTP, and I didn't put any endpoints, it's just the route, that's why, that's the path. And every time someone goes to this API gateway, call this URL, our Lambda function will get invoked. Right now, I have an error. We'll look at this later. Why do we have an error? You know what, I'm gonna stop here because this might be already a lot. And I will be doing just a quick recap before I end the episode. We designed the solution to read from a DynamoDB table and we used SAM, the service application model, to build these resources, right? The Amazon DynamoDB, the Lambda function, the log groups, and the API gateway. Now the API gateway exposes a URL publicly and whenever anyone calls this URL, well, the Lambda function will be executed and will go and read from the DynamoDB table. Now, in the next episode, we will write the code for the Lambda function and we will add DAX to the template to add the cache. 
and the code pretty much will come will go here so i'll show you how you can leverage aws sdk to interact with aws resources but that shall be in the next video right here so just click on it to access it talk to you soon and peace out